Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. This is the second lecture uh, devoted to combinatorics of the poker game. Um, now, the first lecture contains certain calculations of uh, some combinations, and uh, this lecture is for the rest of the combinations which are part of the uh, poker game. Now, this lecture, as uh, any other, uh, is just part of the Unizor.com um, advanced course of mathematics for teenagers. Uh, now, I do recommend you to, uh, to go to this website and look at the notes for this lecture first, because it contains um, all the problems which I am going to present right now um, and answers, so you can basically check your own answers, um, as well as the logic behind all the calculations. So, um, all right, so let's just finish up the poker game by um, analyzing few combinations which are still remaining um, uh, to be counted. Okay, um, the pr probably the most frequent, well, not probably, definitely the most frequently occurring um, combination, and I'm talking about combination, versus something which has no combinations, which is even more often. So the combination is one pair. Now one pair, you have five cards out of 52 complete deck, standard deck, and out of these five cards you have to have one pair of cards of the same rank, let's say two kings or two nines. Now the other three um, should not actually complement this pair uh, for instance, you cannot have the third card of the same rank because in which in, in this case you would have um, the combination three of a kind or or four obviously uh, cards of the same rank and um, uh, so basically you have to avoid these other um, uh, combinations and only the only thing you have the only combination you have is a pair of two cards of the same rank okay. So, how can we calculate the number of combinations um, with one pair in them? Well, first of all, we know that there are two cards of the same rank. So, let's just pick up the rank. So, it's one of the 13 different from 2 to 8. So, we have 13 different choices to pick up the rank of the cards, right? Now, after the rank is picked, um, now the rank means uh, basically four different cards of the same rank. Uh, let's say um, clubs, diamonds, cards, and, uh, and spades. So we need only two. So we have to really pick two cards of that rank out of the available four. Well, that obviously can be done in this number of choices, right? Number of combinations of two cards out of four. So we have chosen the rank of our pair, and we have chosen two specific cards within that rank. Now, now we have to take care of the rest. We have three other cards, and for other cards we should actually make sure that they will not combine with these cards to create something uh, more than just one pair, maybe like a three of a kind or something like this. Now, how can that be done? Well, obviously, we have to choose the rest of the three cards out of other ranks, right? Now, we have um, how many different ranks uh, do we have? We have chosen uh, one particular um, uh, one particular rank for our pair. Now, the rest should be all different, right? It cannot be like two of the same rank or even three of the same rank among them or one of the rank which is the same as these two. So we basically have to pick up three different ranks from whatever the ranks are remaining. Now we have chosen one for the first pair, right? So we have uh, out of 13 we have 12 different and out of these 12 ranks we have to pick three different ones. So that's why I put number of combinations of three out of 12. Now, that gives me three different ranks from which I have to choose these three cards. Now, each one of them can have any of the four suits, right? So, out of these three cards, out of these three ranks which I have chosen, for the first card I have four choices, 
uh, of any of the suits. For the second card I have four choices and for the third. So I have to multiply it by four three times. And this is the number of combinations called one pair or a pair. By specifying the number of combinations from 12, I'm excluding this one and that's how I'm making sure that there are no other cards which have the same rank as this pair. And now I'm using the number of combinations of 3 out of 12, which means I'm choosing three different um, ranks. They do not um, uh, pair with each other among these three. All right, that's it. That's the first problem. Problem number two, we have two pairs. Okay, the combination which is called two pairs obviously means we have well, something like uh, 3 and 3 and king and king and the fifth one can be something which is not one of these because if it would be if it was one of these it would be a uh, full house 3 plus 2 for instance uh, it should be something like 10 for instance which is different so this is a two pair with certain suits which these cards belong to. I'm talking about ranks right now. So these are five cards of different ranks which form two pair combination. One pair and another pair and the fifth card is completely uh, different. All right, so how many of these combinations exist? Well, let's do it this way. First of all, let's choose which two uh, ranks we would like to be represented as pairs well obviously we have 13 different ranks so this would give me 2 out of 13 so great we have chosen two different ranks let's say 3 and king in this particular case or any other pair of ranks now this pair is only two cards with this rank, and there are four altogether, right? There are spades, uh, diamonds, uh, hearts, and, and clubs, right? But we need only two of these four. And we are free, basically, to choose any two. Which means that we have to multiply by number of combinations of two out of four for this particular pair, and two out of four for this particular pair. So this gives me two ranks, one for each pair. This gives me the freedom of choice within the first pair of the first rank and the second pair freedom of choice for the second rank. Now I have to worry about this guy. It cannot be one of these, right? So two ranks have already been chosen for two pairs. Out of 13 ranks we have 11 left. So the freedom of choice for this guy is I can choose any one of the 11 remaining ranks. And for that particular rank I have four different suits which means I have to multiply it by the freedom of number of freedom of choices uh, number of choices uh, for, for the suit. So that gives me the total number of uh, two pairs combination. Now, another thing which I uh, just wanted to mention, it's a very simple case. Um, uh, I did consider, in the previous lecture, I did consider the straight flush. Now, straight flush is straight and flush, which means you have a consecutive uh, ranks, and at the same time, they are of the same suit. Let's say 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. Or ace, king, uh, uh, queen, jack, and ten. All of the same suit, right? So these are straight flush. Now, out of these straight flush flushes, which, uh, by the way, we have counted uh, 40 of them. That was the previous lecture. Why 40? Because we have to choose the top card, which can be either ace or king or queen. Uh, there are ten different combinations, ten different cards, and different ranks rather which can be the top rank 
and then everything else actually is predetermined so you don't have any freedom of choice so you have only one freedom of choice the top card so there are 10 different ranks and four different suits that makes it 40. now one particular straight flush combination has its own name it's called royal flash and the royal flash is when the top card is ace so this is ace king queen let's keep jack and ten so this is a royal flash if they all are of the same suit how many of these combinations are well basically only four because there are four different suits so the number of royal flash combinations is equal to four and these are usually included into straight flush they have just a special name okay now the last problem which i have is basically we have exhausted all the different combinations so the last problem is how many combinations which do not belong to any of the other category there are no pairs no straights no flushes nothing among these five cards now uh, in the game of poker if you have one hand which contains basically no combination and another hand which has no combination the highest card actually wins if highest cards are the same then the next highest etc so that's why this particular well pseudo combination is called high card but basically it's no combination all right so what's the number of no combinations what's the number of high card combinations if you wish well first of all they have to be of different ranks right because if there are two cards at least of the same rank that would be already a pair or, or three of a kind or four of a kind so all uh, ranks must be different which means we can just pick up the combinations which contain five different ranks how many of them are well there are 13 ranks so out of 13 ranks we need five different ranks now what's wrong with this picture well there is one combination and it's called straight when different ranks actually do form a combination if these ranks are consecutive right okay so how many different consecutive ranks exist well we already counted this it's 10 starting from ace from king from queen from jack from 10 from 9 from 8 from 7 from 6 down like 6 5 4 3 and 1 and 2 and even from 5 down because we can use ace as the lowest with the rank of 1 right so we have 10 different ranks which we should really exclude 10 different um, combinations of ranks i would say which we have to exclude from this number so minus 10 that gives me number of ranks which we can use for our combination so all different combinations of ranks of this number are good now let's talk about what kind of suit we want these cards to be well if any card can be of any suit then we would have this number of combination multiplied by four to the fifth degree right we have four choices for the first card four choices for the second card etc to the fifth card again there is one exception if they are of the same suit then that would make a combination and we're talking about no combination right so the the five cards of the same suit make a flush and we should exclude it so how many different flushes if if suits are already chosen then um how many different flushes are in this case well four because there are four different suits so we have to subtract four from this so these four distributions of our ranks among suits are not supposed to be counted because these would be the combinations called flush so the product of these is actually the number of no combinations combinations or high card combinations all right so that actually ends up all these counting exercises 
which I wanted to present to you. And what I did also, I put on the board uh, all the different combinations which I was uh, talking about in two different lectures, this one and the previous one, and I have calculated all these uh, number of combinations which I used like formulas, I have counted the real numbers here, and um, so this is the number of choices for this last one which I did, the high card, this is the greatest, and I have sorted in a decreasing um, a number of combinations order, so the most frequently occurring combination is no combination at all then one pair combination and then two pairs etc so this is the order and in the game of poker obviously any combination which has a, a, a rarer occurrence is considered to be stronger uh, than the one which has more number of occurrences well for obvious reasons now what's interesting is to add these numbers together no combination and these combinations which are completely different from each other and I'm getting this number two million and a half and something right now this is supposed to be all the different combinations which can be uh, constructed from from the five cards uh, out of the standard deck so which means that this number should be equal to this number of uh, combinations of five cards out of 52 cards in a deck well if you count what this number is you will get exactly this what does it mean well that's a great check of all our calculations if these are summed together give you the number which is equal to this one and they do I did check that actually proves that all our calculations are correct you see again let me just emphasize it once more in the combinatorics, um, the, the number which you obtain, it, it, it's a pure logical conclusion which you make, and you might make a mistake, so like undercount something or overcount something, so you have to be very, very careful. And existence of some checking procedure, like in this particular case, this is a greatest checking procedure, it proves that you are correct in your calculations. Another way is just if you solve the problem in two different ways, that would be the good, the good uh, checking as well. Okay, I do suggest you to go again through the notes for this lecture on the unizor.com. Um, again, try to um, uh, solve all these problems just yourself. Um, have your own formulas. It would be great if you can derive exactly the same formula. It would be even better if you derive it in some other way and get the same number, one of these. Um, and basically that's it for the game of poker. I think I will use the playing cards more uh, in uh, different problems related to combinatorics. And definitely I will return to these problems when I will discuss the, the probabilities. Because obviously the combinatorics is basically the introduction into the probabilities. It's a very, very important topic. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.